do you have to be in the Magnificent Seven for the rest of 2024? No, I, I think that actually we're heading into kind of a Goldilocks scenario with inflation coming down. Uh, you know, GDP growth for the third quarter was 4.9%. They estimate that it's going to be about 2%. Uh, for the fourth quarter, unemployment is low. Uh, wages have risen higher than inflation. Two-thirds of the U.S. economy is consumer-led. Uh, consumer so actually, I'm very bullish for the S&P 500, not just for the Magnificent Seven. Every time that you and I have talked over the last 12 months, you actually go a little bit deeper on the technology sector, you know, into subsectors that you say, OK, I have a thesis here. Let's take, for example, semiconductors. Uh, what is the 2024 semiconductor call from Mel Lagomasino? Oh, I think semiconductors will continue to be strong. I think the whole healthcare sector can have huge uh, profitability and efficiency from the use of artificial intelligence. So I think what we're going to start to see, Ed, is how different sectors are going to start applying artificial intelligence, not just in terms of research and innovation, but the ability to empower their employees at their desk. And so I think that it's going to be much more broad-based than the tech stocks. I think it's it, regular companies, industrial companies, consumer staples companies, et cetera, uh, have the potential to have much more productivity as a result of these new tools. I think we're in the beginning. We're, we're in the beginning stages of what's going to be a transformational uh, technology for all of industry. How do you use AI every day? You know, there's, there's the investing side and where you can allocate capital. And then there's, you wake up and think, how do I use AI today? Well, if you think about it, in, in our own work, uh, we're using more and more AI tools uh, to actually take care of a lot of administrative tasks that our very talented people were doing. And now you can really leverage uh, them so that they can use their full talents instead of spending it on a lot of administrative tasks. So I think that's just a small sample of, of what AI can do to just leverage every single company and the way that they use their, their talent. I mean, I, I don't think, I don't, I'm not one of those people that worries about white collar workers losing their jobs. I think AI is going to empower and lift uh, white, white collar workers to do a much better job. Mel, there are certain sections of the technology sector that are sensitive to rates. Higher rates discount the present value of future cash flows is what I say on the show all the time. And right yeah. now, the market seems to be shrugging off a pretty constant stream of Fed speak that is warning us about our anticipation at the timing and depth of rate cuts. Why is the market not listening to the Fed? Well, I think we've been in this tug of war um, because I between what the market says and what the Fed uh, is saying for months now. And that's what's caused volatility in the market. Um, but I personally listen to the Fed. I think in spite of um, what the market would like, I think the Fed is taking its time. It's making sure that the data, that the lag effect of the interest rate rises that they put in place, uh, that they really understand what the data is saying before they, they start lowering rates. But they will lower rates. It just might not be as fast as the market expects. For this year, how top of mind is geopolitical risk? And, you know, knowing that you look so closely at the chip sector, I, I go straight to China in my mind when we think about both the supply chain but also demand side of that industry. Well, China is, I mean... China's economy is really not doing well. And I even think this latest stimulus that, uh, you know, the Chinese government uh, tried to do to sort of stabilize the stock market is not going to work uh, because there's fundamentally, fundamental economic issues in China, starting with the real estate sector, but also the finance sector. And I think the interference of the government in the, in the business uh, sector has really chased away a lot of the foreign investors. The lack of the kind of governance that we're used to seeing has chased away foreign investors. And they played a pretty big role in China. So, um, so I, I think it's different with China. The geopolitical issue that I think most people worry about is actually right. what's going to happen with the US election. Having said that, 
We just, we just did a study of what happens with every shock in the stock market, starting from World War II, all the way through you know, the Israel-Hamas situation. And the stock market reacts emotionally, initially. And then six months later, a year later, it's up. So uh, Mel, but I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. We're short on time. But before I lose you, I got a question from our audience that's tuned in right now. If AI will help white collar workers in the US, as you said, what are the implications for those industries uh, that outsource a lot of work to, to workforces in India, for example? I think some of that work's going to come home. I don't think we need to outsource. I think it's actually going to be a huge boon for the US economy and for our friends that are closer to us. I think we're going we're to focus more on resilience, not just cost.